on my way to the bridge, I looked at my good friend, Francis Brown, a third class quartermaster who was helping steer the ship. He was one of my best friends on the ship and we hung out together in better times, playing cards, drinking a few beers and joking together. We just locked eyes and communicated silently that we might not make it through this one. I went off to find more CO2 canisters and I ran back towards the bridge, falling in the process which caused the CO2 canister to fly out of my hands and crash down the deck with a bang. As soon as I got up, I saw that I saw what had caused me to slip and fall. It was blood on the deck that hadn't been there moments before when I left the bridge. It was my friend Francis Brown's blood who had caught a machine gun bullet or a piece of shrapnel in the back of his head and his blood was everywhere. His eyes were closed, but his face was swelled up like a balloon. It was something that no human being should ever have to see, especially when it's a good friend of yours. In a little while after going below deck and seeing more scenes like that, I look, that looked like a slaughterhouse with a cacophony of wailing and desperation in the background. The wounded men kept begging me to help them. And it was frustrating for me not to be able to do that because I had to move them from the passageways and into the mess hall so they could get the medical attention they needed. Finally, the jet attack was over. And I went back to the top deck and then saw torpedo boats coming at us at a high rate of speed. And now I saw who it was. The Star of David flags flying above these boats was quite a surprise, and at first I assumed they were coming to our rescue. The delusion only lasted a minute, because I then saw the splash of several torpedoes that they dropped into the water as they headed towards us. Did you know they were torpedoes? I mean, did you identify, it seems like that's such a, if I would have seen Israeli boats, I would thought, oh, they're friendly, oh, something just went in the water, what could that be? Did you actually know they were torpedoes at that point? I, I did, Jocko, because I could see the uh, uh, trail in the water. Oh. I saw the two go aft. I don't know where the other, they're fire, they say anywhere from five to six torpedoes, the general rule is five, but I mean, five or six, what difference does it make now? But. Uh, the two that went aft, I saw those. I didn't. I don't know where the other ones. They could have been aft or forward, but I do know that one. That one did hit, and uh, that's that's when the, the ship started listening badly to the starboard side, and it just went like this. Well, first the ship was picked up. This is when. Out of water. So so before the torpedo hit, you say the four torpedoes launched almost simultaneously. They had. Had they hit us, the Liberty would have sunk immediately and the rest of the world history would have been written quite differently. Those four had miraculously all missed. The fifth one was fired and it was immediately obvious that it could not be outmaneuvered. The countdown began. We were warned to prepare for a torpedo hit and we hunkered down in torpedo attack mode. This meant bending your knees and elbows, putting your hands against the bulkhead and relaxing your neck. And all of that is made nearly impossible as your thoughts of imminent death take over your mind. So there was a time period where the, the fourth torpedo launch, or sorry, the fourth or fifth or whatever it was, there was one that you could tell that it was going to hit you. Mm -hmm. Could yes, you sir. see, you could see it in the water coming your way? No, I, I couldn't see it. I was uh, below decks, one deck below the main deck. Were they counting it off on the one MC or something? Yes. The oh. cap, captain said, uh, uh, prepare for a torpedo hit starboard side. And then we knew it's just a matter of time, and it hit. And I was thinking to myself, if if this ship goes down, I'm going to go down with it because I'm not going to get in the water and try to stay alive and let them guys shoot me in the water. I'd better go down with the ship, and that was my intention. I was going down, but the ship just it just miraculously stopped listing. Um. How, what are you thinking, uh, Larry, as this, as you're hearing the countdown come, starboard side? That's yeah. got to be absolutely horrifying. It, it was, and we were internal to the ship. So, I mean, we had no place to run. We were had been sitting in our, our general quarters positions doing our job when he said, prepare for torpedo attack. And we got off our position, got ourselves up against the bulkhead, and squatted down and, and just braced yourself. But, you know, you're not, you're never really prepared for something like that. Um, you just, you don't know whether or not it's gonna hit 
right where you're at or somewhere else. We were above the water line, but um, we were right against the bulkhead that separated our comm spaces and our PNR spaces, which is the area that the torpedo came into. So the, the explosion itself was deafening for us. And um, you know, like I said, we got blown to the overhead, got concussions, and probably the shrapnel wounds that, that we received after that. Um, but you immediately scramble to your feet to, to try and help your fellow shipmates that are down below. We didn't know how badly the, the torpedo damaged that area, but when we opened up the hatch, we could tell, you know, I mean, the water was rising and, and people were scrambling to try and get up the ladder so that they could get out. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it was nerve wracking, absolutely nerve wracking. Uh, to say that we weren't scared to death, I think would be an understatement. <laughs> <laughs>